My experience with Parkinson's is perhaps different. My doctor seems to think that the 40 years of Aikido I've done has profoundly influenced how the Parkinson's exists in me and how I relate to it. Uh, for those people who are interested in the kind of thing that I've done for myself, uh, my website, beinginmovement.com, with hyphens between being in and movement, has a free book called Reach Out. It's about peacemaking. But in Aikido terms, Parkinson's is, is my attacker. And if I can learn to make peace with and feel kindness towards the Parkinson's, it works better than if I hate. And the hatred increases the tremors, and the acceptance reduces the tremors. Except when I'm being filmed. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean that sort of nervousness or self-consciousness increases the tremor? Any arousal increases the tremor. If I'm excited and happy, it, the tremor increases. If I'm anxious, the tremor increases. If I'm being filmed, the tremor increases. If I... go inside and quiet myself, the tremor reduces. When I do body work or Aikido, I'm out, but the tremor reduces. What you just did, was is that easy to do, or did it take you some time to learn? It, I've had I, uh, Parkinson's for about t 10 years, and it's only in the last six months or so. That I can start doing that, but as soon as I come out, if, unless I'm doing Aikido, Coming out means energizing in a different way than quieting within, and the tremors come back. So, so I some, have someone who doesn't want to learn Aikido or doesn't know uh, what that is, can you explain in, in simple English what you are doing internally when that happens? No. <laughs> I can say it's, a, sum, it's a, sum, a summation of a lot of the exercises about spreading awareness through the body, relating the awareness from the inside to the outer surroundings, quieting myself. That's why I suggest the book Reach Out. It's short, it's to the point, and it's the essence of what I'm doing in, inside myself. Mm -hmm. And, and how, how did you get started with, 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 with what seems like a different way of relating to Parkinson's? Um, Aikido is a technology for relating differently to, to challenges. Push on me. I yield to the push and thereby control it. It's altogether un-American. In your case, probably un-English too. Uh, I apply Aikido principles to any difficulty. So when the Parkinson's came along, it was natural for me to apply it to, to deliberately to the Parkinson's, but also the exercise, the mindfulness, the bodyfulness, as I would call it, all of that is a natural part of my daily life. I apply it just as much to vacuuming the floors. And, and for me, as an external observer, the, the tremor is the most obvious thing, but is it the thing that you find the most difficult or challenging? It's just about the only symptom I have. I have no stiffness. Uh -huh. I can stand on my foot with one, with my eyes, one foot with my eyes closed, which most people cannot do. That's the Aikido. So, so, so the Aikido actually has already minimized your symptoms even before you were, before you... Could, could control the tremors, mm -hmm. yes. Of course, I can't be certain of that. I'd need five of others of me to not do Aikido as a control group, mm -hmm. but it seems reasonable and my doctor thinks it's so. And, and do you do anything else that you find helpful? Um, I garden. I, I've given up driving a car pretty much. I bicycle wherever I go. Uh, it's being present in the body in a balanced fashion that seems to help. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know where it will go in the next 10 years, but the last 10 years have been tolerable. And, and, and do you have, um, is, is this something that you, you think you could teach to others? Yes, I've taught it to others, but not for Parkinson's, for conflict resolution, for trauma recovery. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been approached by Parkinson's people to learn this. Um, I know
know I could teach it to them. Whether they could use it in this way, that remains to be seen. Uh, oftentimes people come to me, I don't work on injuries, I work on body awareness. Mm -hmm. So somebody might come to me with an injury, and, I'll, and at the end of the session they say, gee, I feel so much better, but it hasn't affected my injury. It's not the injury per se that I'm working on. In the same sense, I'm not stopping the tremors, I'm starting the quietness. So in a, in a first session with someone with, with Parkinson's, what, what would you do? I don't know. Or you, you mean it would depend on the person? It would depend on the person. If somebody comes to, comes to me, if two people come to me with sore shoulders, their whole lives are different, and it, it shows up in a short, sore shoulder. So I, I don't use protocols pretty much. Okay, so if you walked into your, your, your room and asked for help from yourself... What would I do? Hmm. I'd throw me on the ground and pin me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Because I enjoy playing. Um, I know what you're trying to ask. Mm -hmm. As a general rule, what I start with is body awareness. Freeze. Which direction is your head tipped in? To the right. Okay, and what, what does that do to your left shoulder? The left shoulder is free, but I now notice a crick on the right of my leg. Uh -huh. What does that tip do to the hips, each hip joint? I don't really know. May I touch you? Sure. What does it do to each hip joint? Yes, that breath. Mm -hmm. what, what, what did that feel like? A relaxation. Yeah, and how did I help you find it. You kind of freed the neck and actually I felt it more in the spine, the lower spine. Right. That's what the crick does. It changes the use of the lower spine. So if you were washing dishes or fighting and you had that crick, it would, it would alter how you're using your legs for mobility and balance. That's the kind of thing I would do. Whether it would affect the Parkinson's. There's a difference between changing the underlying disease state and changing behaviors that can be modified. So I'm, I'm not sure what I would do that would affect the Parkinson's per se, but I could affect how you move with the Parkinson's. So you, you could change how I move and my behaviors, which might make my life more comfortable or more... Yes. The Parkinson's itself might continue on as it would, but with less effect mm -hmm. on your life. And could you, could you even do this by Skype? Yes. Uh, I haven't worked with, Scott, with Parkinson's people by Skype, but I've been very surprised to find that I could work with people doing all kinds of other things by Skype. It's not quite the same. I can't touch them. But if you look in my books, the books are ma mainly scripts for various exercises, concatenated to take people to a destination, which is useful. If I can do it in a book verbally, I can quote myself when I see the person live and, and work that way. It does work, surprisingly. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you. And just, just for a little background, um, do, do, you, do you take medicines for Parkinson's? Yes, not the levodopa. Um, I have some slight indications it may be possible to avoid that, but I don't know yet. Um, but I take um, medications which prevent the, the, deg the degradation of the dopamine that is there. Mm -hmm. I don't yet take uh, replacement artificial dopamine. Mm -hmm. mm. And is there anything else I should have asked you about this that would be interesting for other people who have the same diagnosis from doctors? Not that I can think of. You've covered it quite, quite well. I'm tilting my head again. That's <laughs> You're probably mirroring me. I, I droop to the left and have to keep bringing myself up. Well, I also read somewhere that it's kind of cute. 